Hello, how are you doing? I hope you've had a good reading year. I've really enjoyed and appreciated all of the discussions we've had about books uh, in the comments and over videos, uh, all of the suggestions I've got of good things to, to read and the comments about what we've been reading. It's really like enhanced my reading experience and uh, it's made me feel less alone. So uh, thank you very much um, for participating and interacting with me uh, over the, the past year. Um, it's, it's been really wonderful. And today I'm going to make a video, uh, which is one of my most favorite videos to make uh, all year. I'm so excited to discuss all of these books uh, because they are my favorite books that I read over the course of 2021. And I think I've read uh, around 100 or 110 books um, somewhere around that. I haven't actually like counted up um, everything I've read because um, you know it's not about the quantity, um, the amount that we read, it's about the quality of what we read and, and I think that's really important to always note. Um, so you know it's it's not reading isn't a competition and uh, but I have been looking at some of the best books of the year lists recently like quite a few of them um, and made a number of videos about them but today it is finally my absolute favorite books um, that I get to talk about. So yeah, I'm, I'm so looking forward to this and I would love to know if you've read any of these books, um, if you have any thoughts about them, uh, or let me know about the best things that you have read this year in the comments below. Um, what have I missed out on? Um, what should I read uh, over the course of uh, the holiday period um, that we still have? Uh, I Yeah, there, there's, uh, there's a lot more to read, I know. So I'm going to dive right into them. Um, these are my top 10 books, um, but they're not in any particular order. I can't, I can't rank them in that way. Um, it's, it's, it, that would just be impossible. Now these books that I'm going to talk about are so special to me, and they're ones that really stick out in my mind. I mean, some of them I read at the very beginning of the year, some of them I only just finished like in the past week. And uh, so it's really difficult to say, you know, what book will last the test of time, you know, and have a uh, really long impact on me. But I think all of these books have and that they really changed and helped me formulate my ideas and understanding uh, about a whole wide range of subjects, um, just from uh, community life uh, to politics to, to history uh, to, uh, you know, just issues to do with individual identity and the consciousness and how we understand the world and how we use language and communicate with each other. You know, these um, all these books um, have something to say uh, about all of these like big issues as well as being just engrossing, really engaging stories um, that I was able to just lose myself in and, and completely enjoy. Uh, so to start off, uh, there is Claire Fuller's novel Unsettled Ground, um, which is such a moving, poignant novel that really surprised me. And uh, and it's the story of uh, twins, um, adults twins, um, who are brother and sister, who are 51 years old. And they, at the very beginning of the novel, their mother dies um, quite unexpectedly. And they've lived a relatively sheltered existence um, out in the, the countryside. Um, they're, they're fairly self-sufficient. And um, so they're suddenly, um, as you know, fully grown adults, um, suddenly have to uh, make their own way in the world and um, realize that their, their mother had a number of debts that they have to settle. And uh, and it's it's about their life going forward, mainly focusing on the point of view of, of Jeannie, the, the sister, and her experiences um, because she was especially sheltered and so um, she learns um, over the, the course of the book you know how to gradually make her way out into the world and become part of a community and to to not be so insulated and uh, and this was a really strong lesson for me I think you know as someone who tends to be very self-reliant I I, I try to you know just stick to myself and and I've had moments in my life where I found it really difficult to ask for help when I've needed it and um, and this book and story showed me that you know it's it's okay to, to reach out and ask 
for for help when you need it and um, and so it really moved me in in that way um, it's overall it's it's quite like a melancholy book but there are moments of great joy and connectedness um, there's also a number of family secrets and uh, and secrets to do the the community which come out and uh, and which um, make it a really riveting read um, as as well as one that is really psychologically insightful and um, and just so moving on a personal level. I also had the wonderful pleasure of speaking with Claire Fuller uh, about this novel, so I'll put a link below um, to the, the discussion um, we have if you uh, want to hear us talking about it. And um, and and yeah, she, she has, it's so interesting hearing about her process writing it, um, but also some of the major themes that she was thinking about um, when creating the story. Now, of course, Joyce Carol Oates is famous uh, for being a very productive writer, but this year she's really outdone herself. She's published five books, if you can believe that, five books. Uh, she's published a novel called Breathe, um, which also I, I did an interview with her about, and uh, so I'll put a link below to that discussion I had with her uh, about that novel, but she's also published three books of short stories as well as a poetry collection. Uh, but the book that I want to highlight and that's really stuck with me is this short story collection, The Other You, Other in parentheses, uh, because this these are short stories which explore this issue to do with uh, alternate paths in our lives. And, and I, we can all get caught up at various points in our life thinking about, oh, what if this chance occurrence hadn't happened to me uh, or what if when I m had to make this one big decision about what I was going to do in my life or where I was going to move to or if I was going to stay in a relationship or break up with somebody what would have happened if I'd made another choice and uh, and this explores those different paths in our lives and why it's impacted me so much I think is because I have often, you know, got caught up with thinking about these things as well. And sometimes it can be really detrimental because you can get so lost in thinking about what is this other life I could have had that you're not enjoying and appreciating the present moment. And these stories, I think, show you how actually getting lost in those trains of thought of, of what would have happened if we'd done these other things in our lives or if something else would have happened. Um, it, it shows how that's really detrimental and and um, and it shows that in such a creative way through a number of different stories. Um, so there are some stories which are sharply realistic about the process of grief and losing a loved one, uh, but there are also stories um, which are slightly more fantastical and um, get kind of surreal and absurd, um, showing uh, this kind of crazy nightmarish landscape of of what would have happened to, there's like a, a, a lifelong professor um, who goes back to a, a city that inspired him, a European city that inspired him, and, and there's it just becomes this really crazy nightmarish landscape. There are also a few interconnected short stories, all centered around a, a cafe and a uh, horrendous uh, event that occurs at this cafe and um, how it affects some of the different people that were involved in it or exploring different uh, you know paths if if this incident hadn't occurred uh, it also feels like a very personal collection to the author herself um, because the opening and closing stories are kind of like two sides of a coin um, showing what would have happened if this individual had stayed in her hometown and uh, and and started a used bookshop and um, and and been a local poet um, or the other side of the coin what happened in her life if she became a famous writer as Joyce Carol Oates has in in her life and um and and uh, and revisiting that that hometown that she left and uh and so yeah it's it's an incredibly moving collection with um yeah very um different forms of storytelling um that that explore a whole range of uh really fascinating ideas um but but they're all really engaging and um yeah and, and i also talked about um this short story collection um 
with Joyce in, in the discussion, uh, towards the end of the discussion we had um, talking about our most recent novel. So these stories were really a revelation in, in some way. And, and even though Joyce Carol Oates is my favorite author, she's someone that still continuously surprises me with, with what she does in her writing. This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross, uh, with its beautiful, very colorful cover, uh, which was also called Poppy Show uh, when it was published in America. And it's about a fictional archipelago in the, the Caribbean and the stories of the lives of the people that inhabit these islands. And this tale is so imaginative that it, it, uh, it really did make me feel like I could see the world in color again. You know, when you, you read something that's so powerful and whose descriptions uh, just really l enliven your imagination and you go out and it's suddenly like you, you re-see the physical world around you. And, and when a book does that, I think it's, it's so incredible. And, and that's something that this book did for me and, and this story. Um, it's mainly the story of a man named Xavier and uh, following his life, but also um, yeah, the, the, the community of this island, which is very special because everyone on the island has a special power that's unique to them. And, uh, and so it's slightly fantastical in that way of, of how these different people have different powers, but what that means for them and how they interact with each other and how they build this community um, is, uh, is so fascinating. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a story that's just filled with revelation after revelation and so many intriguing little details to it that um, I think there's probably so much more to this story that I kind of missed um, the first time reading around. So it's one that I know I want to, to reread at, at some point and um, that it'll be a great pleasure to do so. And it gets so many levels of it. There, there's just like fantastic stories of, of friendship and relationships, um, but also yeah, divisions in the community, like economic divisions and racial divisions and um, divisions to do with like language and how language is used and, um, and what the, the overall kind of fantastical story says about how we we live together it's just magical what she does and it and it really reinvigorated you know my my love and passion for fiction and and why it's such an important thing for us to read bewilderment by richard powers which is such a moving emotional story um it's at one side um, a very personal and intimate story of uh, this this family a father and son and uh, the the wife and mother um, who who died and their process of grieving but also it's such an expansive story about the world in general and and where we're going as a society um, the 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 breakdowns in our environment and uh, and the our, our the structures of, of our communities and uh, how he portrays that um, is is so incredible um, it it, uh, it just it's a story that completely drew me in uh, following the this father and son over the the course of the year as the the son is having really a difficult time adjusting to um, being in his school and interacting with other people and he's uh, he's an environmental activist um, sort of modeling um, that after his his mother's work and um, how he wants to carry that on and is so passionate about it but then at an, in a way which is completely detrimental to him and his father how he wrestles with that of, of trying to help his son and um, the imaginative places it goes since his father is an astrobiologist to imaginatively take his son to other worlds um, to try to calm him down and the the way that this is so creative and and to to like imagine other life forms and other societies and how they might organize themselves um, is is a kind of like reflection and commentary on our present world and and where we're going as as well and um so 
yeah, it was just completely wrapped up in this story, got so emotional by it. And, uh, and yeah, and I had the wonderful, absolute pleasure and honor of uh, speaking with Richard Powers about this um, novel as well. Um, so I'll put a link to, to um, that interview I, I did with him because yeah, it was, it was one of my favorite things that I, I did this year and um, was such a pleasure to read. He's so intelligent and thoughtful, um, both about his work and, um, yeah, and the, the themes and ideas that he's writing about and why they're so deeply personal to him and meaningful um, to him. It was such a great experience, but uh, also yeah, just reading this book is, is such a wonder. The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. This is such a riveting story. It just completely gripped me. Uh, the story of three individuals uh, that are trying to decide uh, whether they want to have a baby or not uh, because uh, Katrina um, is pregnant uh, by Ames. Um, who uh, she works with and uh, and aims after um, it is revealed that Katrina is pregnant um, reveals that he uh, at one point had transitioned into being a woman before detransitioning back uh, to being a man and uh, and also the story of Reese um, who is a trans woman uh, that Ames had a relationship with uh, while while Ames uh, was a trans woman and uh, how Reese has very strong maternal instincts and uh, so wants to be a part of this new family and uh, and so the, the 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 different connections and relationships of of these individuals as trying to decide you know what they're going to do uh, about this um, is is just such a it's such a fascinating story and um, and uh, is has so many interesting to things to say about issues to do with uh, transphobia and uh, also the larger queer community, uh, but then also society in general and issues to do with gender and, and parenthood and uh, yeah, these, these much larger uh, things in life. And uh, and I, I just there there's so many scenes in this which are just so sumptuous and um, there uh, are very funny aspects to it, uh, but then also incredibly moving aspects to it. And there are some scenes that just really stick with me. Um, that uh, yeah, just stand out in in my mind. Um, so so this this book was just wondrous to read. Cathedral by Ben Hopkins, um, a big, long, engrossing historical novel set in the 1200s and 1300s in a European city, uh, all centered around the construction of a cathedral, um, which isn't actually end, like spoiler alert, it's not actually completed by the end of this novel, um, but sort of shows how, you know, the, we, there are these big landmarks in these historic cities and how these are things which uh, grew and developed um, and were constructed over a long period of, of time. And so you see multiple generations of, of people um, all centered around the, the construction of this cathedral. Um, but it's also quite like a at the same time like an intimate story but also quite a grand story in that it follows um, three siblings that come from relatively humble backgrounds but then all make very different lives um, for themselves and are able to progress forward and sort of like move up in the world um, but then also it's about this city and community in general and how it's rapidly changing over this medieval time in in the world um, how um, the 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 role of, that religion plays in community um, but also commerce um, the, the growing level of, of commerce in society and and how those things play against each other and and how um, areas are, are governed and um, and rules and and how laws are carried out um, so, uh, but but at the same time, it's not at all a dry story. Like each individual character, um, and explores many other characters. Um, in addition to these siblings, um, who are all really fascinating, and so it's like truly an epic story and and novel that I was just completely engrossed by and um, found so fascinating. And I know when I when I talked about this before, this book before, um, a lot of people made uh, comparisons to uh, Ken Follett's um, fiction. Um, which actually I've never read so 
I can't say whether that's accurate or not. I, I know a lot of people instantly respond to that, 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 oh, it sounds like Ken Follett. Um, so I, I do need to read that and see if that comparison is accurate or not, or if Ben Hopkins does something very different to that. But uh, but I I just enjoyed this book um, so much, so would really strongly recommend it. Another amazing historical novel, but this time going to Brazil in the 17th century, is Palmares by Gail Jones, um, which is also such an engrossing, moving story um, about a young woman named Almeida who's born into slavery and following her story over a number of years um, as uh, her mother is sold off and uh, her very strong connection with her grandmother who's such a fascinating and uh, really a wonderful character to, to read about. Uh, but following her story um, as uh, she goes um, to a community of, of freed slaves um, called Palmares, um, which is uh, kind of like a utopian type community. Um, but like in Thomas More's uh, Utopia itself, um, this is a community which also uh, can't uh, exist without slavery. Um, so slavery occurs in Palmares itself and uh, and the, the complications of that and the, the impact and meaning of that and um, and then following beyond that after that community and following her journey um, which is very episodic as she meets a number of different individuals and has these conversations that gives you such a fascinating uh, overview of um, the changing society as a whole and the impact of, of slavery on many different levels and um, and its its me meaning the reasons um, for it and that were occurring in in Brazil and um, the, the the impact of colonialism and um, and also the the formation of of language and um, and how people's religious lives played out um, but but also at the same time yeah it's just a very interpersonal um, story of, of her connection with um, all of these different individuals um, who are all so unique and have such a fascinating point of view in themselves um, that this, this story is just fantastic. Then there's the much more contemporary novel, um, A Shock by Keith Ridgway, um, which all centers around a community in, in South London and a number of different individuals who are sort of loosely connected with each other. Um, uh, a lot of their, their stories center around a pub, um, which is shown on the cover of this, this novel. And yeah, the way it delves into their different stories and uh, their understanding or misunderstanding of each other. And I, I think why this novel touched me so much is, you know, after this over a year and a half of, of mostly staying at home and, and being constrained to, you know, very local area of, of life because of the pandemic, of, of thinking about uh, our individual lives and connections with the people around us, how we have this glancing awareness of the lives of the people around us in our, you know, our immediate physical uh, landscape and how we touch upon each other's lives in, in small ways and think we have an understanding of each other, but quite often misunderstand each other and how he creatively shows that in these different stories, but but also how he tells their, their different stories. He uses a number of um, sort of different techniques for telling their stories. Some of these stories are very realistic and um, some of them are very dialogue based and um, then other stories are um, quite surreal and and almost nightmarish in conveying the the stories of their lives and uh, and just the, the range of perspectives he goes into um, some of them are, are different queer individuals and um, there are some older um, characters um, there there are there's a librarian um, there's um, a man who perpetually lies um, but who's quite likable and um, you know how they're can be people that we're aware that they're almost compulsive liars but they can actually be quite endearing um so that's and uh but also to the perspective of mice um so yeah it's it's uh it's such a adventurous and um fascinating point of view he gives but um but like i said this depiction of what community actually means uh, i think is so impactful another book which has
has so much to say about community life is Claire Keegan's uh, brand new, very short novella, Small Things Like These, uh, which is set in a uh, small town in Ireland in 1985, just before Christmas, and a man named Bill is making some deliveries of, of coal and timber to uh, local households, but um, also to the local convent, where he makes a discovery of uh, something that is very sinister going on here to do with a, a training school for girls um, happening at this convent and then he's thrown into a quandary of what he's going to do with this knowledge and uh, through his uh, interactions with with people in the community and dis his his discussions with uh, people around him and also uh, reflecting on his own personal past and experience experiences um, makes a decision of, of what he's going to, to do and it is such a, a tense and moving story because you get this this sense of what is at stake for him personally and the the pressures of a small community um, to uh, to constrain the the knowledge of uh, of what is actually happening and wanting to hide the darker things um, that are going on um, but at, at the same time wanting to be a supportive environment you get this strong sense of, of how this is a loving and supporting community but there is also a dark side um, to community life and um, yeah, and how she conveys that in such a short space of time I, I think is just incredible. And finally there's a novel which I only just finished reading but which was such an incredible experience that this is a book that I know is going to stay with me and that I'll want to go back and reread and, and discover more of over time and that's The Love Songs of W. E. B. Du Bois uh, by Honorary Fanon Jeffers and this this story is so epic. I mean, I, I love a big like family epic, as I've been talking about with some of these other books. Um, but but this is so unique and uh, unlike one I, I've ever read before, and um, is so impactful and and meaningful. Um, telling the story of uh, it's it's a story of uh, three sisters and and very different. Uh, paths they take in their lives and um, how they were all really negatively affected affected by this early experience in their life um, this, this horrible early experience in their their family and the secret in their their family um, but how they've been really differently affected by it and, and make different decisions on on um, what they're gonna do um, going forward um, but uh, also mainly focusing on the story of one of the sisters of Ellie of as she's researching um, her family history and, and past and so you get these stories of their early family life from like m many generations um, past to um, and how their family is a mixture. Some of their family were, were black, um, some of them were uh, Native American, um, some of them were white and um, and the, the it, how these stories of their family life have been lost over time you know and uh, and you know consciously sort of covered up um, by the, the narrative of history, um, but how she is trying to reconstruct um, what really happened and uh, and how that is conveyed over the, the course of the book is is so epic and really draws you back into the past and gives you a renewed understanding of it and and new perspective on it um, that I really appreciated and uh, and so was just so moved by this this novel and this story and um, yeah it's just incredible experience and and all the praise it's been getting I think is is totally justified so these are all of my favorite books um, from the the past year uh, like I said, I, I'd love to know if you've read any of these and if you have any thoughts about them, uh, please let me know in the, the comments below. But also let me know about some of your favorite reads um, from the past year, because like I said, it's just been, it's so wonderful having discussions about books and um, feeling like we can you know share with each other our favorite reads and, and books that um, have really changed us in, in a fundamental way and um, have given us new insights. And, you know, isn't reading just wonderful? <laughs> so. Um, and so thank you for watching and I hope you have a happy new year and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.